Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Elijah Ignatia, and I'm here with Denise Aurora, and I have been introduced by Gino, who I've met in the last week, who I was introduced by William and Attila, and this synchronistic storm is happening, and what, what I'm doing is, is following up with it, and, and I think this is happening across the world right now, where people are meeting each other. They're, 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 they're seeing this this, this something happening on the planet, and uh, rather than more control, I think we want, we want more freedom. And so as this control is coming in, there's this upsurgence and emergence of, of freedom lovers, and I think that's what at least probably we have in common. And so why don't you give me a little introduction into you, and I just met you, I don't know you. Uh, give me a download as to where you're at right now. Oh, um. Um, I've been around for a while, but I've been a little bit on the hidden scale. Uh, I've had many, many ideas. I'm considered a visionary or imagineer in my career, um, uh, which fell upon me when I was through, through grad school, I mean, through undergrad. And since then I've done grad school, um, both philosophy and I was working in the technology landscape, um, to put myself through school and then it ended up being uh, a, a really exciting experience because the uh, people that I worked with were um, visionary in what kind of technology, how to create technology and develop technology. Um, they were working more in like uh, villages and tribes and also uh, they, they moved into identity, security and privacy, uh, which for me is, um, I wasn't so interested in security, privacy and identity because it's um, very political and, and law oriented and that's a little bit above my head and beyond me. I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in well, health and wellness. And so I come, I've always come at my designs from the internal perspective on outward. So, um, and I, I meditate and I dance and I sing and I've always been a very experiential oriented person while also nerding out on the computer for many years. So I've, I've had this, back and forth between go live off the land and off the grid to get back to technology and create some things. And uh, some of the things that I did develop in some of the companies I worked with were, um, were very visionary, paradigm shifting, although our actual creations didn't um, make it to where my intellectual property, um, I, had an ex I didn't have any exits with equity or anything like that, but I, I, I tended to work for equity. Um, and then some, Things happened to me more recently in the last couple of years where I kept on trying to work my way into freedom and uh, by working with this company with my mentor in a, uh, an industry that doesn't resonate with me and um, because health and wellness resonates for me or the mindfulness resonates for me and the body and the, the journey that we are in our embodiment and energy body resonates with me. So. I wasn't actually working with my resonant field by working in an industry that didn't work for me. So I raised my standards and shifted my life. And now I'm just coming out again um, where the merging of technology and, and transformative um, consciousness comes together. And here I am with multiple part written books, many ideas on technologies and uh, YouTube's presentations, radio shows that I could do and start. And I realized that I can't do it alone. So I've been searching um, my for my my crew my people my tribe uh, online <laughs> when i've been offline so much so i'm like okay here i go let me be online amazing eh? i mean it's so i couldn't go to a coffee shop walk around meet anyone and have the same type of discussion but here online it's it's instantaneous you can you can meet someone right away through someone and that's where this world is going i think you know the the revolution seems to be right here in zoom Oh, yes. And I met Gino Yu at um, TransTech, Transformational Technology Conference in, um, in the, the San Francisco Bay Area. in Silicon Valley, Palo Alto. So mm -hmm. I did go to conferences. It was a good place where you can meet people. But I wasn't always there because I was always either working, going to school, or off in some jungle. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I couldn't always make all the conferences as much as I wanted to. So then how close are you to sort of designing your ideal job? Because I, I think that's where we're going. We, we, we want to use our gifts. We want to bring our genius into the world. We want to be with others who know what that is and how it works and who we are. And that's what's rare in the, in the normal corporate world, right? I mean, there, there's these boxes you got to fit into and you have to do the, the corporate agenda. But now I believe there's this 
there's a whole new paradigm that we can build. And I was just wondering for you, you know, how close are you to really knowing exactly how to put your parts together? Um, I've been working on this for a long time in, in my own um, experience of life. And I would say um, I'm getting closer by being with people that um, understand my nature. And um, out in the world, a lot of people haven't really understood my nature and tried to tell me to be another way and this way and that way and put me in a box and saying, you should, you should, you should. And when people tell you you should, you don't listen because um, we're all different. And all the shoulds that are natural in the world are, you know, in our, our democracy or our, our systems, our existing systems right now are not the shoulds that I should be. You know, and I've, I've again and again as a, a visionary have created roles that didn't exist so and, and, and that's what we need to do right now so I think right now I'm still working on creating my role and um, um, what's really helping me is like the gene keys and human design and astrology right now because so many shoulds that I was like lost in but that's not how I feel and trying to put myself into a box for so long and um, and, and thank goodness for people who can read my my design and say, you know what, that's not what you're designed for. So it's okay, be that. And it's, um, oh, you're having that experience? Well, that's a part of your, your life experience and what the knowledge that you're bringing to earth. Um, and, I'm, uh, and, and also some of the things that I, I thought that I wanted to be, but I, I, you know, my culture wouldn't let me or because it, it wasn't in my culture or I didn't have the people who understood that um, capacity for me. So, um, I guess I'm, I'm getting closer because there are people that support me and, and see me and are um, nourishing my nature. Um, mm. So, and that's what I've been calling for because otherwise that people are trying to put me in a box and put me somewhere else that I don't belong way too often. Mm. I'm, I have a lot to offer and I'm intelligent and I can do like a hundred different things, but really those five things are where I can flourish and help the world best. Right. So, I'm not sure if that's how close, uh, that's, you know, I'll know when, when we're creating something really cool. Hmm. Well, I, I think what's happened is, is most of the anomalies or the weirdos or the, the, the people that couldn't fit into the normal system growing up uh, have gone through a lot of uh, trauma, a lot of heartache, a lot of hardship because they would not succumb. They would not participate to the degree that most did in order to fit in. And now, I, I feel it's our time. Now, now the whole world is changing and, and uh, the species is going through a transformation with the technology and with the internet and with the ability of all of us to be these independent little nodes everywhere. And now we're starting to communicate with each other. We're the ones who have the knowledge, I believe, for the, for the species to go into the future. And, and, and there's a great distinction between this new paradigm that hasn't been built yet and the old paradigm that's dying. And they, I guess you probably heard of the... Um, what are they called? The butterfly cells or the, the cells in the butterfly that are imaginal cells that are, you know, the new butterfly coming out and they're at war with the, with the pupae cells. And there's such, you know, that, that metaphor is such a good one for humans to show that transformation truly involves a change from one state to another. And uh, if you haven't gone through it yet, you don't realize, you know, there's a lot of difficulty involved, especially if you're around people who don't really understand what's occurring. But as soon as you, you come across people who've been through it or are going through it, they, they go, yeah, 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 I understand fully what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I think what, you're, what I heard was the bringing together technology and transformation and consciousness. And this is not in, in most business plans, right? I mean, but, but I think so many human beings right now are very interested in that. They're interested in developing their own potential. They're interested in, in, in finding out what their gifts are and using them to make a living. Mm -hmm. and so I guess from my point of view, I've been working on an architecture for the new paradigm. I, I, I call the cell a, a shared knowledge community. And as the corporation is a cell in the old paradigm, uh, we need a new cell in the new paradigm, and it's 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 one that has the focus point of your gift rather than the focus point of, of the product. So it's moving from the commodity to the human being as the yeah. main reference point for developing a whole economic system. Yeah. So 
I have been working with sacred geometry. I I like maps. I'll show you this. Here's here's a camera. Kind of a map of. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is like nine levels, of and with nine hearts, but it's basically nine cycles of time, and the outer one is your lifetime, and then you have years, and then you have the lunar uh, lunar cycles, and then you have daily cycles, and then there's a switch point to seasons because season is the real switch point in terms of uh, how everything changes. Winter is very different from summer, and you got something something coming in. No, I'm t I'm writing at the same time, and I have another screen. Okay. Uh, I, I get. I've been like doing this for so many years. I can type it as fast, and sometimes I just want to like write down. Oh, nice. Like, yeah, okay. Like, okay. So if I'm looking that way, it's because maybe I'm correcting my writing or <laughs> like looking at it really quick. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. And then you have hours, minutes, the present moment, and timelessness. So. I think a big shift from the old paradigm to the new paradigm is going from linear time to cyclical time. And so this is called the time translator. And that time translator, when you uh, change the, um, when each one of these, oh. lifetime, year, lunar, daily, seasonal, hour, oh. minute, present moment, and timelessness, it's a different infographic that then goes on the Enneagram. And I don't know if you, the Enneagram is this symbol right here. We have one, four, two, eight, five, seven. Are you familiar yeah. with the Enneagram? Yeah, someone else I'm working uh, with is working on with the Enneagram a little bit. I'm, I'm not as familiar, I think, as uh, you and him, though. Okay. Well, the Enneagram has personality profiles most of the time, but it's also a universal symbol for mapping processes. Because the, the, tri the triad is the primary triad, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and any basic trinity that is in, in many spiritual tradi traditions. And those three forces come together in six ways. So the Enneagram puts the three and the six together in the nine. And then when you map information on it, you are hopefully being in alignment with the higher laws. And so when you use sacred geometry symbols and you map information on them, and then you use it for the mind, then you use it to organize your business, the uh, assumption is that you are then going to be in a greater alignment with the way things are. And I think one of the reasons we're in such trouble. Okay, go on, yes. One of the reasons why we're such, in such trouble is well, we're not in alignment with that time or the... Yeah, we're, 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 we have these man-made systems that are based upon some sort of corruption or some sort of scamming, usually, and it isn't in alignment with universal law. So, uh, <laughs> and then... Out of alignment. <laughs> it's corruption and scamming. It's true, though. I mean, but anyway, go on, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's funny because in, in the background, right, you, you have a, a symbol, a sacred symbol. And I mean, you're, it looks like the, um, there you go. And, you know, it's perfect, right? It's the halo. It's the energy field. It's, and so when we take, when we program it, when it when a big biggest thing I learned is with these values, you know, like joy and mm -hmm. discovery and trust, you can program these fields. Yeah. You can create a conscious value system and create a field of intelligence that then is your map to the universe saying, this is what I want to learn. This is what I want to realize. And most spiritual traditions and most business practices you know, are based upon values as being the, the, the main thing that sort of runs the ship. So I found a way where you could make a, a value system Oh. By, by programming these little green conduits oh. are where you put your values. So you put a different value at research. Like let's say you have innovation at research. And let's say at infrastructure, you have simplicity. And let's say at learning, you might have inspiration. And in operations, you might have accountability. And at creativity, you may have you know, passion. Synergy, you might have trust. Uh, services, you have... Um, could be uh, awareness, interfacing or marketing, could be boldness, and stewardship might be integrity. 
So, and in the middle, you have communication, which might have clarity. So it's a methodology where you can create a conscious value system for your company or your organization, but also for your community and for your individual, because then, do you know Ken Wilber's four quadrants? The I inner you. I mean, I know. The, there's the inner you, the outer you, the inner group, and the outer group. So he found that when you look at the individual and the collective, the inner and the outer, you create these four quadrants, the inner you, outer you, inner group, and outer group. And these are like four ways that we can organize knowledge because they're very different. And so what I did is then created four levels, the level of choice at the inner you, the level of flow at the outer you, the, at the inner group is synergy, and the outer group is harmony. And so the whole inflow matrix operating system has four levels that then correspond to Ken Wilber's four quadrants. And Ooh, okay. so it's, it's like how, like you were talking about the gene keys and human design and astrology and, and there's, you know, mm -hmm. Ken Wilber's model, there's the chakras, there's, you know, seven steps of highly effective people. There's all these models, but how do they all come together in one whole system? So that's what I've been okay. working on um, as part of my research. Perfect. Really cool. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got to this? Uh, well, I think like anyone, I, you know, at some point I became a seeker. I, I just wanted to find the truth. And the, right. I, I couldn't find meaning in, in the way the world was organized. And everywhere I looked, it kind of seemed a bit off. So I went on my whole spiritual path since I was about 20. And along the way, I found kind of like Ken Wilber did that maps were very prominent, like the medicine wheel in the First Nations tradition or the, or the uh, Kabbalah. Uh, you know, there's certain maps that hold sacred knowledge. And so I was very interested in, in all of the maps. And then I started working on my own versions of the maps and sort of looking at how to connect them together. And then I've had yeah. sort of downloads where, you know, all of a sudden, something comes in and it's a whole new thing and it came in and I can't say that I created it, but it came through me. And so I, I again, this is kind of like the weirdness of, of when you're working with a, a different type of phenomenology, it's, it's hard to explain to the scientist or, or the business person sort of where these things come from. Uh, and if you tell them, you know, they probably won't believe you. Well, even Einstein worked in that kind of world. <laughs> it's just that uh, he didn't necessarily say all of that. I mean, that's what they, they say. Um, so you say you're interweaving all these different um, paradigms. Like, how do you see it coming through? You said you had a game or like, because it's a, a consciousness game or? Uh... Well, I, ha I have sort of like five, a major five. I have the inflow matrix operating system, which is like a, a mental operating system. I have the new paradigm toolkit, which are card sets, game boards, maps, processes, and software. And then Planetary Guardians, which is a media game. And then the School of Conscious Communication to teach it all. And then the Very Secret Plan a web TV show that shows the story of how all this is going to come into being. Wow. Oh, okay. So this is part of the Very Secret Plan. Like anyone I meet is is in the plan and and so if you I, I see it as a as a web tv show starter it's like i think you know people like yourself can hold a show and and i, I meet you and we have some kind of rapport and i find out what you do and, and then i've got my plan and I'm trying to figure out how to connect all the people together and then all of a sudden right we're, we're changing the world very interesting um super yeah this is definitely along lines of what a lot of the people i'm talking to are Doing, but also it helps me fit in yeah because you're already seeing that i could potentially do a web tv show or something like that or like yeah uh, and that's what people are telling me that i i wouldn't believe is that i'm i'm a collective voice um just because you know um, my background doesn't allow me to have a collective voice i'm supposed to be behind the computer or always geeking out by myself mm. or something like that i'm, I'm kind of have like a scientist scientist edge but i also have a desire to, to come out um but i struggle uh, coming out, you know, in, in my voice um, alone. Mm. I've, I've been a telecommuter for many, many, many years or having my own business at home. 
Um, and I, I never really met my mate because I was always alone and I didn't actually get out there with my words or my, my, my stuff. So no one ever found out what I was about. So that, that's really beautiful to, um, to be able to fit into that. But also the inflow, I'm looking at the screen where I wrote it down, the inflow operating system, the new paradigm toolkit, Planetary Guardian School of Consciousness and Web TV show. Super cool. Um, inflow yeah. matrix, just, just so you say the inflow matrix. It's information flowing in a matrix. Inflow matrix. That's what I wrote. Inflow matrix operating system. Um, yeah, this is, so you, you basically have a whole architecture of how to bring this through to the, the public on, on some level. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your ideas about the web TV show, since that's something I'm interested I'm, I'm interested in the whole gamut, but this is also, you know, how do I fit in? What do you see there? Okay, well, I mean, what I'm doing right now is I'm bringing together people from media teams where you have four people. And so then I teach them the maps and start to give the art, the inner architecture. And it's a process of, of bringing people together into a new way of communicating. Um, like I've got a lot of tools to assist people to create that shared reference point. And then all the teams that are gonna come together through that process are gonna have that same reference point. Then you get five of those teams and then you make a superhero team of 20 people. And that's connecting into the Mayan calendar I don't know if you know about the 20 galactic signatures, but I, I believe that's like some coding that when human beings come together in a team of 20, that their DNA gets activated at a very oh. different level. And that's when your superpowers really start to come out in a, in a different way. Huh. Okay. Um, you might've noticed that, you know, when you get a lot of these, you know, uh, new paradigmers in the room, uh, there, there's a field, there's a, there's a field of energy where sort of healing takes place, transformation takes place. And the more, people that are awake and aware that come together, the greater the field. And so the superheroes are people who know who they are and uh, are coming together to work with other kind of superheroes because they're, they're every superhero, the Incredible Hulk's a bit strange, right? I mean, he can't hang out with the normal people. He's got to find some other people just as strange as him. So I think we're not quite in that category, but, but to some, we may be like, I mean, people in the old paradigm look at people in the new paradigm and they, they look insane. And the people in the new paradigm look at the people in the old paradigm and they look insane. Like their thinking is so different. Their interpretation of reality is so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I've noticed is um, I seem to be a catalyst of new reality. But when I'm alone, uh, trying to people who don't understand what I'm talking about or trying to introduce them to the idea, I get so much um, flack and so much that I have to like that, uh, that I'm like swimming through their muck. And yeah. they're trying to pull me back down, and I can't do that anymore. I need I need a superhero team, and yeah. you know, of course, I was looking for um, maybe my superhero team in the wrong place. You know, I always imagined that I would have like a boyfriend partner that we would be like superheroes together and help make people. But then, you know, I meet these really interesting guys who just um, who who are interesting and beautiful people, but just aren't on the level of, or in the same creationary field as me. Maybe they're in their own. And, you know, maybe that's why we're merging because they're teaching me about their way and, and I want to teach them about mine, but they haven't been interested <laughs> in mine. So it's like, I want to be with people that are interested, that are speaking my language or that I, I can say, yes, I'm with you on that. And they can see, say, oh, wow, you are with me. Great. And, and then not shove me in the category as um, do my dishes, uh, be my secretary, which I've happened a little too often for me. <laughs> But because I, if, if someone are, um, I, have, I, have, I have the capacity to speak when I'm welcome and people mm. are kind to me. Mm. When, when they're um, wanting to, when they're not, and they're elitist or they're debated or they're competitive or they're going to automatically assume by something about me that I said that I'm not good, then I just shut up and I be quiet and I, I listen. Um, which is a good thing to do, but I, I also have something to bring to earth. So I, I want people to be able to bring uh, what they have to earth and that they are nurtured in, in superhero <laughs> new paradigm ways. Because I, I see that what has kept me down are the old, is the old paradigm, is the oppression, the mm -hmm. oppression, the oppression, the oppression. 
And mm. uh, so many of us are in that space. And, you know, it, um, as a, a lover of humanity, I don't want to see us in that space. I want to see us in, in a more thriving, more heartfelt space. But I can't keep my heart up if people are trying to take me down. So I need to be with people that are going to help me leave this. So we're going to weave together. For sure. For sure. And I, and I, 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 I spent most of my time sort of hanging out with spiritual visionaries over the last 20 years and, and very, you know, people that aren't well known, people that are sort of in Western Canada. And Western Canada has a, a lot of very powerful, intelligent, beautiful people. But like yourself, they might have been the weirdest person in the city. They might have been the weirdest person in their village. They might have been the weirdest person in high school. And again, so, so there's, there's a lot of as you say, they get dismissed, they get shut down, they get, um, it's, it's, it's horrible in, in many ways. And so, again, the tools which I've been working on is helping to really put it, take the inside world and put it outside and use divination a lot. I, I don't know if you like divination, but I, I love it. invented some tables where you sit with six people or eight people or four people and you turn these cards over, not, not tarot cards, but actually business language cards. Perfect. And it changes the nature of the conversation. It changes the nature of the listening. It changes the nature of everything that occurs. And over and over again, I've seen divination coming up with a conversation that is, is genius because people can't bring in their, their same ego identity. It's so strange, right? It's, it's, uh, they're open and everyone out there, no matter what paradigm they're in, is appreciative of deep listening from a group of people. And so I think in so many social situations, as you say, that people are being competitive, they're trying to grab the attention that they, they, they yeah. want to be seen in a certain light. Mm -hmm. And that's very different when people are in an exploration or they're, um, they're deeply wanting to understand who that other person is rather than trying to you know, win some argument about what's wrong or right. So yeah. And I think people are, are not tooled enough with the ideas of how different types of conversations can bring up about different ways of being. And for me, like I, I'm in California, but I'm from, I'm from Western Europe, I'm from Holland, like my family's from Holland. And I grew up in, you know, with nature. So I grew up in, in the hills of California, like with the dogs and the animals and the horses and always like looking for the deer so I could go hang out with the deer. And, I was just a very nature girl and my parents would take us um, camping. And I think that that got me really connected to the world in a different way. Um, I, I was, didn't always have people there, you know, I mean, I did different types of, a lot of lonely child quite a bit, um, but I, I did have times that I had family and people there, of course. Um, but, um, so, but a lot of my, my time was spent listening to the wind and um, looking at the sun and feeling the breeze and being really connected with myself and, and the nature. And so I feel like my conversation style stemmed from that. So when people are always competing and things like that, I, and I have no place to put myself in. And I actually get upset when people interrupt me. And then it makes it, it it's been one of these things where like, I'm attached to the fact that they don't give me space. So I get upset, you know, so I've been working on that, not getting upset, but I'm also working on having um, people being in conversation with people that actually give you space, like the, the holding of the stick. Like I, I insist with some of my friends that I, I work on technology, like, no, we each get five minutes and you stop interrupting me. Don't interrupt me. No, do not take me on. No, I don't find it a game. I don't enjoy the game of taking it off course because it's a game. Uh, but for me, I, I want to focus on what we're focusing on because it, it has deep meaning to me. And I, I believe that's partly why the world is not doing well, is because people are taking people off track all the time. They're not focusing on deep listening to what meaning meaning really means to every person. Or that, that could even potentially be a conversation. Some people don't even have that. Or if I bring it along, then they don't want me because I'm not pretty enough or something, you know? <laughs> and, you know, so, so people listen to pretty, you know, and, um, but yeah, so, and, or I don't have the, you know, I don't have the, the, the sweetness that, you know, requires for them to, you know, the nurturing that people will open to, like, we just all have different capabilities, and that's why I like structure, uh, that's why this sounds really beautiful, this, this game, you know, this divination cards at a table, um, 
but then who do you find that will want to play with you? <laughs> well, I, I'm the same way. I mean, sometimes it, it takes, let's say, 15, 20 minutes to actually bring up the point you're trying to make. And as you can tell, I can get going and there's a lot I, I got to put together to, to make my point or to share what I'm trying to share. Uh -huh. and, if, and if people interrupt, it, it does, it, it throws you off and you, you, you lose your, your pace and, and, and that irritation yeah. stops yeah. you. Like you don't want to talk anymore because you know the person's not listening. They're not paying attention. Exactly. So that's, that's been a real sorrow for my, of mine in this society. And of course, people have told me a little bit about, you know, it, a lot of people consider it a game, but I'm not interested in this game. It's not my game. It, I, I, it might be in this culture, but I'm first generation American. And um, I think the Dutch, I don't know really, but because I'm more in America, but I just feel like I'm from another planet. And mm. um, I'm, I'm more into the, the native way of being around the sacred fire and, and listening to each other and knowing about our dreams. And I, I love um, the, the tea guayusa from the Ecuadorian, uh, from the e tribes in Ecuador. What they do is they, they get up before dawn and they all, they come together and drink guayusa tea, which is a dream tea. And it helps, and they, they speak about their dreams before they start the day. Mm. And to me, that that's a beautiful ritual. And um, for, for many years, I, I thought that I would meet my partner and we would have different kinds of rituals besides Christmas and Thanksgiving and, you know, chase the bunny around or get the eggs. Um, like I, I love all these, these, we, we have these massive cultures that, um, I mean, rituals that don't really, really matter to our heart on, on some level. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get a bunch of chocolate and I'm going to get fat and I'm going to eat a lot. No, thank you. Like, Oh, how many times have I left the table going? That's just too much. Like, I mean, my mom loves food and stuff like that, but um, I don't love it that much. It's, it's good, but I would rather meditate for a family ritual <laughs> or like go sit under a tree and, and hug it or something <laughs> or, mm. you know, swim and be dolphins or <laughs> mm. like sing with the dolphins. Just these kind of rituals are missing um, from the human heart. And I, I think that people are, are missing the true expression of their, their embodiments. And I think it's time to come back to ourselves. Hmm. Well, I, I think there's a, there's a very large audience and I think there's probably a lot of uh, maybe teenage girls and younger women that would love to have um, some eldership from you and uh, other women like you who are holding again, a different type of knowledge that may not have been honored uh, in our culture much, but I think that is really switching. I, I think the switch in our whole spiritual practice has switched the masculine to the feminine and that the, uh, the women are really leading the way in every area of, of, of our species. And so I, I would like to empower or inspire or to assist uh, people who want to bring their voice into the world. And I, I feel like I have uh, quite a lot of experience in, in uh, getting shut down and un un understanding the shadow side of, of what this world is about. So, Well, it's helpful for, for women uh, to have men that understand um, because, you know, there's, there's a couple of roles that we can have as a woman. We can um, play the game as is, or we can, uh, you know, go for the game of our heart and, you know, root for that in whatever way we know how. And I would say that a lot of us are not equipped with the way that and um you know I, I would say one thing is for my generation the women were i think too masculine um like we we all come from broken up families where the our mothers took care of us or that, that's a common theme you know and so a lot of us don't have haven't had partners or children because we were so masculine and that, that didn't help the, the guys that wanted to be more feminine with us not celebrating their, their, their beauty and their love and not, not even being able to see it because they're being so mean and um, abusive even, you know, because they're used to um, a paradigm that doesn't serve them either. And they just, that's what they learned. And we were, we were just all working in ways that didn't work for us. And I think that this new generation has, um, the newer generations have the capacity to um, feel and know more because of our experiences. And I think that women in my age group, you know, could have had some of the most amazing kids, but some, some did. 
and you know I would I could have a 20 year old at this point um but I don't because I didn't meet my partner and um it was a difficult time but um women have the potential to and men be heard in, in a more soft, gentle, nurturing way, I think. And I think it's this return of the feminine by nurturing what we love in life, not being in, in competitive fight war mode against what we don't like. And that, that's old paradigm. And that's based on old psychology. And now we're, we're going towards the, the new um, forward looking uh, space rather than the back looking space of how to fix something that was wrong we're looking for the solutions to look forward to and to live and to be. And we need to remind each other of that in, in a way that is really helpful because a lot of us have those patterns that don't serve us, even though we might believe in you know, looking forward to a newer, more beautiful, more nurturing world of life. We might not always know how to do it. So it's about setting up the spaces that we can do that and do that and, and nurturing each other through it. And, and, Deep listening so we, we know the depths of everyone and, and know where they're, they're seeding from, where their, their innate spark is so that we can remind them of that. Like in Ubuntu, mm. where, where you remind people of their, their highest and their best. Mm. So I, certainly, I certainly need that reminder sometimes. And I, I need to be able to remind people of that when um, they're hurting me as well. And so I need a whole tribe or society to help me with that or a game or a consciousness or a group, a superhero group. Um, Cause I don't always have the, um, the ability alone to be that nurturing person I want to be because I haven't fully let go of all the old pains. I'm working on it, but um, you know. <laughs> may we come into the light, please. <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to meet you and to, um, to hear your words because they, they don't sound strange. They're, they, they, I understand, you know, I guess where you're coming from to, you know, to, to some degree. I mean, we can't understand anyone, but I mean, I, I just think there are certain patterns in our society that are prevalent, that are obvious, that are, are, are so, you, you hear the stories over and over again and, and then you see it in your own life. And I think whatever that patriarchal mentality of the sort of generational was gener through generation after generation was passed on through so many men. And, you know, most of these men were traumatized and most men exactly. you know, are beginning to understand that they, they need a lot of retraining and, and they're going to get it through from women. I would imagine from loving hearts, from nurturing people who, who see them for who they are rather than whatever they're trying to hide from and whatever they're trying to. to what I've noticed, oh, go ahead. That's okay. I was going to say what I've noticed in uh, my age group and a little bit longer, younger and a little bit older is that uh, a lot of these men won't listen to the women unless there's men supporting them. Like they'll, they'll listen to a woman that um, men are looking at. <laughs> hmm. Like, you know, like they'll, they'll, if, or, or if a man, Either they'll listen to someone that's um, appreciated by by the community more, or by by other men, or um, if you know if a strong woman, it basically takes more than one. I think a lot of times, like um, if if a man is saying yes, what she says is good, then another man might look at it. But it depends on who's kind of like alpha and who's kind of like leader and who who who's believing who who has the the strength to you know see see through the veil and understand and have the perceptions and be able to say, yes, that's, that's good information. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of men are still looking at other men to um, tell them what's real and what's not. And that, I think, I think a lot of people are doing that in general, but um, yeah, we need your support. <laughs> mm. That's basically it. So, so this is, I have a deck of cards called the conscious communication card deck. Cool. And one of them is the first contact convo, which this is, so to speak. And I feel this is a very important um, conversation whenever you first meet someone to, to begin that journey towards, you know, your highest potential within the connection that you can have. And um, I'm, I'm loving your backdrop. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I love the, I can't, most of these, I, I have something in the background and then you barely see my head and you see something in it. And I, I thought I, I, and a lot of times I have a, a sort of a, a headdress on in different ways. So I, I was, I was trying to be kind of formal. I'm, I'm trying to, because I, I have a tendency to be a bit eccentric and to have fun in ways which most people may not understand. I, my sense of humor is, is always there. <laughs> Okay. It, I find there's a there's something beautiful in being ridiculous. There's something beautiful in not having to come across in a way that is is um, either perfect or uh, normal. You know, I mean, again, like that backdrop. It's like that's a backdrop. You know, that's you know beautiful. That's um, that's that's like if they're like I, I see you in a kind of a, a consciousness news show, like a kind of like an anchor where you 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 interview uh, groups of people and you facilitate a conversation and you get them to uh, dive deeply into some topic which is the topic or theme of the week, and uh, I mean I. I think that would be very easy for you to do and uh, using all of your talents to sort of organize, uh, you know, sort of a very specific configurations of people, you know, getting, you know, brilliant minds from all areas of life and bring them together in conversations that just, you know, enlighten and brighten anyone who watches them. So I, 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 I think that you have a, a huge future in, in media. <laughs> oh my God, if only I could like do my makeup right. <laughs> and my hair! Oh no. I used to have dreadlocks and dreadhawk and all this kind of stuff. So the normalcy thing, I'm trying to learn how to do. So, <laughs> so I understand eccentricity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's funny because I've it's... had pink hair and like all kinds yeah. of colors, like black, red, white. Not quite blue, but. <laughs> I walked around for a couple of years with a blue blue wig, like for and a purple cape. Like I've, <laughs> I, I was in uh, protests, you know, uh, in Calgary, as I had this character, Captain Sweep, and I've been attempting to be Canada's worst activist, and I've been very good at it, and I I, ah. I fail miserably because I I'm constantly facing, you know, this the same kind of insanity. And so no matter what I do with my tools and my, like I, I work here to, to actually try to figure out, but then when I go into the world, it's like this, you know, I'm, I'm constantly met with the old paradigm. I'm constantly met with it, with a, with a kind of a, a thinking that there's, there's always conflict, you know, it's just, it's just like, if you're in the new paradigm, you're always in conflict with the old paradigm because the old paradigm is trying to control, it's trying to minimize, it's trying to disrupt, it's doing whatever it can to stop you from truly being your, your, your highest spiritual self because they don't want that. They don't want a free sovereign being who isn't going to back down when they're being you know, oppressed. They, they just want little lemmings to go along with the herd. So um, speaking of that, one is... Um... I'm just going to brush upon this idea. I've been kind of integrating uh, ideas that I think that I had rejected and like looking at why I had rejected them for a long time. Um, and I'm, I'm more into in integration at the moment and, and working with the they and the they inside of me and, and how all of them are just one of us and an, an aspect of our shadow and our light. And so I'm, I'm looking at all of this as like, um, how do we integrate all of this? How do we keep alive and and woven and working on this this new paradigm together in their own ways um, so i have this one thing called the potential for totality where all um, energy centers are lit and interconnected and interweaving with each other um, and so that, that that's just one thing that's that's uh, potentially a radio show or a book i've partly written it or uh, writing so that that's where i am right now is i'm still like is it going to be writing is it going to be talking is it going to be um, dancing? Is it going to be a script? I've been like kind of playing with all these um, ideas, but at this moment, I can't really sit at my computer and write because um, so it's starting to be like, okay, maybe it's going to be through my, my talking. Oh, but do I talk too fast? Am I pretty enough? That's, I've been dealing with like these whole things. So 
and what I'm ending up doing is like uh, during this time of the the um, stay at home and everyone's getting on Zoom, I'm able to finally uh, weave my friends together because I know like a lot of people around the world that I've met at various conferences, festivals, locations, um, you know, friends of friends or, you know, wherever I've met people. Like I met Gino at a conference and I'm meeting you through Gino. And um, so I, I have started this group last week <laughs> that you're talking about. I started one, one group and the group is um, for systems designers to create um, new systems. So hmm. this already, when you're talking and telling me about your stuff a little bit further than we spoke um, last week on, on text, um, I'm thinking about, okay, who can I pair you with? And I think I've figured out who I can pair you with because I'm being two presenters at a time uh, coming in, discussing your creations, doing screen shares and showing your creations and then having the discussion afterwards and seeing how we can have spontaneous emergence or um, you know, collaboration. Mm. So um, really, really bringing really interesting people together already right now. So, and I've been thinking about this for so long. Am I going to interview like one person at a time? And it's more like, you know, actually I'm moderating at the moment, uh, you know, a bunch of my friends coming together to talk about their projects. I know a lot mm. of really interesting people. And a lot of people are asked, have asked me to be on their project and I've um, pretty much rejected it again and again because I feel like I'm, I'm supposed to be more out there in I'm more networking. Don't put me in the silo behind the computer by myself anymore. That I've already done that for 20 years and I'm not doing it again. I don't have children or a husband because of it. So no, I am being with the people. I want to, <laughs> even though I still, my face is starting to get wrinkly. Oh no, why do I finally have to go online then? But whatever, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some technology that'll help me stay young. <laughs> That's the whole thing with being a woman. You know, I was like, how's your presentation? Can you see me turning red, Dad? <laughs> No, but I, I think that, I don't know, I mean, we all, we all want love, we all want to be with the one. I, 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 I was once on Halloween, the love prophet, and I was, uh, I had this lineup of people, and, and they're all coming to the love prophet. It was the first time I was doing divination with cards, and they all asked two questions. Okay. And it was, all of them, you know, without asking each other, and it was just, am I with the one, or when will I find the one? And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think it's especially for people who, you know, love is so dear, but they aren't willing to sacrifice, you know, their, their highest ideals to be with people that aren't in their same space. And so I, I'm surprised. I thought in California, there'd be a lot of people that would be more in, in tune with your thinking. Um, um, well, I'm kind of eclectic. And I haven't fully gotten out there. I mean, I've been in Tulum, Mexico after grad school. Um, and I was in the hills before grad school. So in the hills, there was just a, uh, and before the hills, I was in San Francisco doing tech company kind of work. Um, with an interest, and, and it was all like, you know, interesting people in every location, but I'm so eclectic that, you know, they felt, you know, one dimensional to me. So, and then the eclectic people that I did meet that could meet me on that level were so eclectic that I, I wasn't eclectic enough for them or they just didn't see me, you know, or, or they were too eclectic or something like that. So I'm, I'm a little bit of like a classy eclectic kind of girl. And a lot of these eclectic people are, are a little bit too out there for me or, um, <laughs> or I'm too out there for others. And, or, you know, so I, 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 I'm, you know, I come off as intellectual, but I have a deep heart. And, you know, that's like a private space for me. But I think a lot of the guys that I, I would feel like a deep heart connection with or um, people, like I, I'm talking lover or husband or partner or whatever, um, they want to see the deep heart first. But for me, I've got this veil of the intellect that they have to pass through. Right. in order to meet my body and my mind and and that's and that's where um the potential for totality is coming through because there's there's these different energy centers and we all connect on different areas first mm. so you know for me if you don't if you don't pass my communication tests then i don't trust you and then you don't get to see the the, the dear sacred heart but like now I'm, I'm working on you know my own belief that working through my heart um how I can work through my heart and have my, 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 my total self in, in alignment and, 
and open and in love, but and in trusted community. Because um, as a female, what had happened to me is anytime I opened myself up, you know, people would attack me. You know, they they come after me like you know, bees nectar or flies to shit, and it was like, ah! and I had to like swat them off all the time, like leave me alone. I'm not I'm not yours. And yeah. so that's just what a lot of women have to deal with, and we all deal with it in a different way. And men have to deal with it too, and everyone deals with it in a different way. So the way I did was by shutting off. You know, some people deal by, with it by uh, playing the field. And I, I, I did it by shutting off and being like, no, you have to come through this veil and prove me, to me that you're trustworthy. And, and then, you know, I, I, I pushed a lot of people away that, away that way because then the guy, that hurt the guys. Like, what, you don't like me? You know, you won't give me your body or you won't give me your heart and on the first date. I'm like, no, like, let's talk to each other. Okay, lost that guy again. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, I guess. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm supposed to be more playful. I'm supposed to be more, you know, I don't know. It's just this whole thing of like, I think we're, we're all just operating from different spaces and we mm. expect to meet in that space and we have no real structured areas or ways to come together we have work we have um the bar we have clubs and like everything is like based on a specific um way of communicating mm. so yeah having something what you're talking about that facilitates um the connections i think in, in the multiple facets that we potentially can i think that that's amazing mm. well i uh, i look forward to uh pursuing whatever occurs because I, I feel there's a connection in, in, in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. And so probably a next step, I guess, for both of us is to, um, you said something about bringing me together with somebody else to, to do some sort of presentation. Yeah, so I'm going to, uh, we had a presentation last week on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time on Zoom. And this week it's going to be Thursday at 11 a.m. And um, Last week we did uh, basic systems and uh, ec the future of economic exchange through value. And then um, this week we're going to do sovereignty and whole systems design. So a lot of my friends I've noticed are systems designers and some know each other and some don't. So I'm basically putting together um, uh, groups where we can discuss um, what we're creating. And so your, your stuff would very much uh, fit in and it sounds like you've got some great tools. Uh, what, what I'm seeing emerging right now is, um, I mean, I, I've developed technology systems in the past or I've strategized and designed with, with them for them and, and seeing how whole systems can be integrated and how you can have parts of this system and parts of that system. And, and you're, it's like different apps, but you know, maybe it's different, um, different works that are, are you know, fully uh, crossing lines from technology to in-person to, um, handheld pieces, mm. whether it be paper or devices or biometrics or um, that these, these, these are going to are coming to integration, integration points. We've all been working on separate silo ideas and now mm -hmm. it's emerging and, and the integrations of these pieces. So I see how your piece can um, fully integrate because, um, you know, I, I was just thinking about school of consciousness today and, and already two of the people in the group are working on certain consciousness modalities. So, and then, you know, a few people are working on um, sovereignty and different different module mo models of how we can um, make new systems. And, but for those new sim systems, I'm, I'm in the consciousness camp, we're all in the consciousness camp. Um, mm -hmm. Just some people are, and they're, they're, every one of these system models are wanting to um, integrate consciousness Capability. So, where where when we bring teams together to create uh, projects, whatever they are, that we are holding on to a certain degree of consciousness of how we um, interrelate with each other, how we talk to each other, um, and, uh, and and in, in things from um, from the uh, gene keys and uh, the different divination modalities according to our, our birth or uh, how we can interweave and interconnect according to our, our gifts. And these are, these are the models that we're working on. So I'm seeing what's emerging right now. It's like we're, we're having different parts of the pie that can come together to actually really create these systems because different people have different visionary parts that they're holding the keys to. Mm -hmm. And so how do we bring these 
these keys together. So please mm -hmm. come on Thursday. We're going to talk about sovereignty. Okay, so Thursday. Okay, so this I'll just be a, a listener kind of thing on Thursday. Yeah. So what happens is we have two to three present presenters. I think two might be the magic number, but I, I had been open to three, and um, and uh, and then we're going to be recording the Zoom. I, I'm asking some friends to come in and do a blessing. Uh, let's see if they can make it. And then uh, the presenters do their works. One presenter, and then a discussion, and then another presenter, and then a discussion, and then a closing. Because um, we're uh, dreaming up and imagining a new world, and it's recorded on Zoom and posted in the private group at the moment. Because okay. we're, we're, we're trying to keep it a little bit, um, you know, tight. Tight at the moment. Mm -hmm. And how how long does it take place? An hour? I thought um, it was two hours, an hour. It ended up being two hours and 22 minutes last time, but it, like I gave an opening of hour and a half, you know, thinking it might go to two hours. But it was basically like everyone was so excited to talk about this yeah. and every, everyone was like, wow, this is the best group I've been on on Zoom so far. Because, you know, we truly are bringing business, new business models together, new organizational models with the consciousness camps and the games and the... Um, so we're just looking how to, so what I'm seeing emerging is exactly like this, like the school of consciousness that goes um, and, and helps the, the, the businesses. And a lot of these business designers or organizational designers are seeing that involved too. So it's not like it's a new idea to anyone. It's just who's, what part of the pie are we working on? Yeah. And what, what do we, where do we really put our emphasis and, and our capabilities? And, and that's where I'm looking at the gene keys and, uh, I'm saying Gene Keys over again and over again because one of our mentors, you'll meet him, is working on the Gene Keys and he's the one, he works in Gene Keys, Human Design and a couple other things and he's the one that I, I might pair you with but you are also kind of like games and he's not really games but you're so, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to tell me or show me about your new paradigm toolkit or um, your pieces because I, to give me a little bit more of an idea Maybe you want to send me some things digitally as well, so I can, because I'm wondering, just to be sure, I, I should pair you with Darmendra or not, or someone else. Uh, or well, I, I'm very interested in the Gene Keys uh, myself, and, and human design not as much, but um, I love, you know, those are, you know, brilliant systems of, of uh, human knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'll follow your, you know, use your intuition, whatever you feel. I think I can okay. I can fit, you know, with who I'm with and bring in a piece that may, you know hopefully has relevancy. Um, I think like any whole system designer, you have to, you know, really watch how much you say in in which package in which to which person because it's it can be very overwhelming to download all these big abstract words to you know without a reference point to, for people to to really understand. So words and ideas yeah so what i'm asking people to do is um because a lot of people have these these huge systems and uh to focus on a part of it but also still introduce your entire system and then um that's what i was looking um well i mean one one thing which i've been doing which is kind of like the start of uh, when i'm teaching a media team is is using values to program spaces like i have this little five communication space model where you have personal space one-on-one -on -one space group space community space and sacred space and then you you i can take the whole group through a a process for them to program it with a value system and it's very simple works beautifully and it's the beginning of really seeing a, a like of all the stuff that i've come up with taking a value and, you know, putting, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one correspondence, I, this is kind of backwards, but trust at marketing, where you can program fields with values. And a lot of times with values, like I've seen them in hierarchies, you see them in lists, you see them in words, but it's, it's like the infographics are different when you start to use circles. So I, a lot of my stuff is circle-based. And, um, that changes the nature of how you organize information. It changes the nature of how the mind organizes information. And it's, it's a big step for most people. Uh, but I think at some point, I actually had a, there's a software system and Brett, I think Brett's in your group, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, his, you know, his group 
uh, with Chris came up with NewMap and they, they created an interface system that uses circles and it's, it's pure genius. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like it. And, and again, it's, it's sort of a, another one of these highly valuable uh, creations that hasn't seen the light of day yet, hasn't got the funding, isn't in the world yet, but you know, is in the background. And I think once we put them all together, I see, you know, as you say, we need to integrate them together, see which piece fits where, and help each other to bring, you know, a whole new way of interacting to the species. Mm. What's really interesting is that I'm, I'm just getting to know Brett now, but um, when I was working in the data exchange world with that identity, privacy, and security, it was about um, ex how we exchange data um, online and um, in a secure way. It was, you know, the paradigm that my, me my mentor was into. And uh, I struggled, I, I was challenged with, but what I ended up uh, designing was also uh, circles. So circles within circles and influential, yeah. influential circles. But that was a few years ago. And um, I haven't seen what Brett has done completely. I, I read um, through his Dropbox of all his information, but he and Chris and Nomap and S7 are now officially not happening. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's, uh, he's uh, in fact, it, Brett was doing um, preposterous Sundays, talking from 11 to 1. Uh, not, I didn't go this Sunday, but two Sundays before. And he was the last one. He was, we were talking about what's our, our bliss. And um, and he was saying that his bliss is uh, basically making more like scripts and media, and he just didn't know how he got involved in technology. So, or he, I don't, I can't speak for him, but um, I totally understand him because I, I was the same. Like I, I was got involved in technology by putting myself through college, and it's taken me on this whole like left field or right field or whatever um, thing that kind of a little bit it because it's exciting working with a visionary and being able to maybe potentially put your vision online um, and seeing how we can create new new worlds that we love um, to live and that the digital reality can help us so I, I also got sidetracked into technology but am also returning into oh wait a minute I'm into health and wellness and transformation and technology stop stop taking a hold of me but for some reason I'm, I'm still in technology when whenever you know not only do you want to do what you love but you want to where you flourish so whenever I'm involved in technology it's, it's like worlds open up for me but mm. maybe I'm a little too geeky for the wellness world or something <laughs> well it's it's bridging it's bridging those as you said silos right and health yeah. and technology mm -hmm. are, are generally not connected but boy they impact each other right like it's uh well there's definitely a movement for that to happen so that's really exciting for me because I, I had them separated for so long Mm -hmm. So I, I think I've got to come to the end of this. I've got uh, uh, something else I have to get to, but this has yeah. been greatly enjoyable. And uh, I, 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 again, this is just the first contact, but I, I see huge potential in, in many ways. And um, I will follow your lead and also uh, perhaps suggest uh, some pathways for you if you want, and we'll go from there. Cool. And um, if you have any presentations, you did show me some some individual um, images, or if you need help with a presentation or anything, let me know because um, I would like to have maybe you guys come up pretty soon, you and Garmendra, if, if that's the, the the right. Especially if you're working with these different um, consciousness um, ways of putting things together. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to. Okay, so we're coming to the end. I, I want to thank anyone for who might listen to this, and uh, thanks for staying for the whole, I think we did about an hour. An hour and 15 or something. Oh, uh, I just want to mention one more thing, and I also do meditation classes. I just want to throw that in, and I'm okay. going to start doing them on Mondays. That's it. Okay, okay. <laughs> See okay, you. Uh, Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.